Welcome everybody uh, to here to Second Harvest Food Bank and my name is Keenan Crick, CEO for Second Harvest and I just want to thank you all for being here today, uh, especially to those who are our donors, supporters of the food bank. Uh, we're here today for you and we're here to talk a, a little bit about what's going on here at Second Harvest and everything that we are doing as a food bank in response to the COVID crisis. Before we get started, uh, just a few key details. Um, let's talk about what's been going on here at Second Harvest since the beginning of March. Uh, it was about the second week in March. We ended up locking down the facility uh, to the public, to the general public, and started a food box distribution and straight out of the food bank and it was a contactless distribution that we started in response to the increase in demand because many of the pantries that we work with here at Second Harvest uh, unfortunately were closing. Many of them uh, are staffed by seniors within our community and so we wanted to make sure that we were keeping up with the demand because the pantries were unfortunately having to to cease their operations for a little while. Beyond that, we wanted to we wanted to be able to get connected with the community to make sure that everybody was getting fed and make sure that we were we were providing the best possible service that we could as a food bank. So we just we really want to thank you uh, as we started our COVID response fund. Uh, we've been able to be able to go out and get more food to be able to provide to the community. And we wanna make sure that we're here to support ev everybody's need in this, try in this trying time. Couple, of couple other things here. Uh, we wanna make sure that we're answering your questions. So as you have questions along the way here today, uh, we have our Director of Development, Jessica Vaughn, who is filming here today. She's gonna be able to respond to your questions as we're going through a tour of Second Harvest. We want to give you an idea of what's what's going on out in the warehouse uh, with our volunteers and with those who really help make all this possible for you all out in the community. So it's very exciting that we get to do this. This is a, a first uh, as far as the food bank goes, as far as a virtual tour and we're hoping that maybe this will be something that we can continue into the future, give you some uh, various updates with everything that's going on. We wanna make sure that you all uh, are feeling heard, that with your voices uh, helping us with the funds that are being provided and being able to respond to the needs of the community. So let's get out there and we're gonna kinda walk through the building here and I'll point out some things along the way and as you have questions, uh, please feel free to chime in on the chat and Jessica will make sure and respond to those or at least fill me in on what questions are being asked and I can help respond to them. So right now we're currently here in my office. We're going to walk out into the hall towards the warehouse. Um, one thing that you'll see is everybody here is wearing masks. And we have, I do want to take one moment to kind of take you into the break room and talk about some of the safety things that we have going on here, here at Second Harvest. We have signs behind me that are covering all the details regarding proper safety measures that we need to keep in mind. It's easy to forget. And so we want to make sure to remind staff as well as the volunteers that are here at Second Harvest to make sure and be mindful of all the necessary safety precautions. Even though we have signage and verbiage periodically throughout the building, uh, sometimes people do forget, they get in a rush, and hopefully they're looking around and really just self-policing one another to make sure that we're all staying safe. So let's go ahead and get out here into the warehouse. This is, this is our warehouse here at Second Harvest, and 
you'll see behind me stacks upon stacks of, of food. Some of this are pre-packed food boxes. Some of this is items that are donated from some of our corporate grocery donors. And many of it's gonna get sorted through, inventoried, and then put up on the racks that you can see over here in our warehouse. And we want to make sure and get that out in as timely of a fashion as we possibly can. Again, uh, we're trying to make sure that we're keeping all the necessary safety precautions. So you'll pretty much see everybody around here wearing masks. Uh, we do have National Guard members uh, here currently. We also have the California Civil Air Patrol. And we also have, just kind of remind me who else we have. American Red Cross. We have American Red Cross, and then we have our our general donors as well. Yes, it's fine. They're just so that they can hear you better. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Marilyn. We got you. All right. That so, fan. What's that? It's the fan. Oh yes. We're gonna move away from the fan, Marilyn. Okay. So now you can hear me. Hopefully, you can hear me better. <laughs> For those of you who have never been in our warehouse, so this is the opportunity for you to kind of see everything that we have here at Second Harvest. Uh, these are our loading docks. So, and we've been in this building currently two years. We are very fortunate to have loading docks because as we get over to our older warehouse, warehouse number two, uh, we didn't previously have loading docks. So this is a luxury item for us here at the food bank. As we get outside here, uh, some of the things to think about, it's extremely hot in the warehouse and also outside here and many of our warehouse workers are having to work outside. So even though we do have the mask requirement, if they are a safe distance from anybody else, uh, we do allow them to pull their masks down to be able to, to breathe a little bit better, get some fresh air because it, be, it can feel definitely constricting. Uh, for many of our employees to have to wear their masks all day, especially once it gets to 100 degrees throughout here. And it definitely even gets to that level in the warehouse itself. We do have fans going to keep everything cool, but they're working hard and we want to make sure to keep them as safe as we possibly can. So, couple other things a couple other things to think about is we still do have uh, for the remainder of this month a contactless food box distribution uh, you're gonna see that coming up here as we walk up to our warehouse number two this is our original well not original but older warehouse that we have here at second harvest and this is where a big bulk of our volunteers uh, come and pack food boxes and food bags for uh, many of our programs that we have here at Second Harvest. You can see right here, this is a volunteer station where the contactless food, bo uh, food box distribution takes place. Uh, this is manned by our Civil Air Patrol members and currently right now uh, they're, they're here in front at the faces of the facility and people can come and into our parking lot and pick up the food boxes right now. And they're here every Monday through Friday from 9 to 2. You can come in, if you are in need of food, you can come right to this gate and they will serve you. Yeah. Until June 30th. Until Yes, until June 30th. This is, this is going on. Uh, as of right now, that is the end date. Um, as many of the pantries are now open back up, we want to make sure and keep our distribution going to them and not necessarily minimizing the food that we're able to get get to the pantries by doing the food box distribution. So we want to make sure and be able to supply the pantries as best as we possibly can. Uh, however, in the event of a, a lockdown situation again and people having to shelter in place, we might be bringing the food box distribution back. It's just as of right now, as things continue to open up and people are out and about in their daily lives, uh, we want to make sure and get back to standard 
normal operating procedure as best as we possibly can. However, keeping the masks on and all the necessary safety precautions. So here we're moving forward. We have groups of volunteers that are currently packing, packing food boxes. Say hi guys, you're live. Hi. Say hello. Hi guys. What are we packing today? Uh, home delivery orders for next Wednesday. Home delivery, perfect. So this is our volunteer and community event center. So when you do come to the food bank to volunteer, this is the side that you're going to be on. Keenan, do we still need volunteers? Yes, we're always in need of volunteers. Let's get back this way, it's a little noisy. Yes, we do need volunteers. We are always in need of volunteers. Uh, like I mentioned before, we have the National Guard, we have the Civil Air Patrol, we have Red Cross. Uh, however, these are, these are smaller groups of volunteers. We're always looking for volunteers to be able to help bag for our Mobile Fresh program, uh, as well as other food box distributions that we ha currently have going on. And we want to make sure we want to make sure and be able to keep that keep that going. We're a we're a staff of 20 here at Second Harvest Food Bank, so we're a, we're a smaller food bank than what you might see in San Jose or Oakland or San Francisco. So for us. A small staff means we need abundance of volunteers. So we really appreciate the volunteer volunteers that come into our facility. Many of them are like family to us. It's just as if they're they're one of the staff. Uh, they might not necessarily be here every day, but we have various volunteer shifts. You can check in with Jessica about the volunteers, and we want to make sure and get you plugged in as many many times as you possibly can make it out here. So we really appreciate it. And just like you saw next door, um, we also have tried really hard to do um, social distancing, gloves, hand washing, sanitizing, the whole nine yards at the volunteer center as well, because our first priority is keeping our staff and volunteers and our participants safe. So that's why you're seeing all of these measures in place. And a couple other things. Uh, we've been incredibly fortunate with generous donations that have come in and I'm hoping for those of you online you are some of those donors that we that have helped contribute to Second Harvest. We want you to know that money is being put to terrific use with the increase in demand. Uh, we've sent out many different social media messages about the demand that currently is going on here at Second Harvest. The peak of the demand was about the second week in May, uh, where our distribution was up over 350%. Uh, some perspective on that. Prior to March, our average weekly distribution of food uh, was about 225 to 235,000 pounds of food distributed per week. Uh, at the height and peak of distribution, uh, we were distributing over 350,000 pounds of food per week. And average since the beginning of March, we're up over 250% of food distribution. So what that means for us is increased costs in labor, uh, transportation costs, uh, food purchases to be able to keep up. We're a, we're a food bank that does rely heavily, 80% on food food donated to our food bank to be able to then distribute out to the community and without that uh, we're having to purchase food so the food the money that has been donated to second harvest we're using that to purchase additional food items such as peanut butter oatmeal cereals shelf stable food items which really are lacking for us here at the food bank those are the items that we're highly in need of to be able to provide a quality, solid meal for for those of you out in the community who are in need in need of the food that we provide. So let's keep let's keep moving along here. Yes, you can come to get a food box today um, at 704. Let me just switch this around. You can get a food box today at 704 East Industrial Park Drive in Manteca. We are here from nine until two. So pop in and say hello. 
um, our Civil Air Patrol will be happy to help you and provide you with those boxes. It looks like there's some potatoes and some other things today. So um, the California Association of Food Bank boxes, which are like meals in a box. Um, so definitely pop in, say hi. They would love to help you. So let's just kind of show you around. Oh, there's our tour guide. <laughs> I am back. We have somebody, a new agency that's coming in for the first time. So they're learning the they're learning the process with being able to come and pick up food to take back to their pantry. So let's get to the, we're going to get you over to the front here. We just kind of want to show you some of the security measures that we've been putting in place. Um, one of the things to think about when the pandemic started, uh, we often had volunteers, staff, uh, agencies, and when I say agencies, those are the pantries that we work with. We had a lot of people moving in and out of here. And so we weren't necessarily cognizant or aware of all the social distance that we weren't necessarily exhibiting prior to the pandemic. Uh, it makes you realize how close contact and how close quartered we were prior to the pandemic. Uh, some of the funds that we've been given, many of it being grant, grant funds directed at safety and providing the necessary uh, precautions to keep everybody safe, uh, we're now making some modifications here in the facility. Uh, you can see here we have, we have gates. Well, right now these are manned gates, and so it requires us to be able to keep these open so many of the trucks that you've seen as we've been going through the facility here can get in and out easily. We need electronic gates, so we're now in the process of getting electronic security gates set up here, so that'll make for remote access. So that way the face of this facility can remain closed off during the day. Nobody who isn't supposed to be in here will be entering or exiting uh, without us being aware of who's coming in and who's going. Uh, makes us helps us to keep better track. Well, currently we only have one electronic security gate and we have two other entry points here here along the face of the facility. So those are going to be electronic now too. Uh, hopefully in the next couple weeks for those of you that that come out to our facility you'll be able to see the new electronic security gates. We've also, and you can't see them uh, really, we now have new electronic security cameras throughout our facility. So we really have no blind spots here uh, at the facility and we can make sure that everybody is adhering to the necessary guidelines uh, that we've set here at Second Harvest Food Bank. One of the last things that I'd like to go over is the front of our main facility here at Second Harvest. Uh, you see the, the loading docks here. Those are all closed off when we don't have, when we don't have any tractor trailers here. But then we also have the, the face of our facility. We have our shipping and receiving door. Uh, those are for the truck drivers that come in. They, that's their entry point and they come here they come here they actually they have to knock on the door and one of our warehouse staff will greet them there and check in, check in with them as far as what their load is and for the the truck drivers uh, they are not allowed to come in the facility uh, they have to they have to stay out either in their truck or we provide them the shaded area over near vol the volunteer center to be able to sit and relax while their load is getting unloaded out of the truck. For anybody else that's coming in, they're coming into our front doors here. And prior to the pandemic, pretty much anybody just walked in and out and was greeted by our receptionist. At this point now, uh, the face of our facility is locked. The doors are locked and you have to ring a doorbell uh, right now and somebody will come open up, find out what, what you're here for and what the purpose is of your visit and we'll direct you accordingly when you're here. As I mentioned with the security gates, we're also going to have uh, keyless or key card 
doors now, both at the shipping and receiving office and here at the front doors. So only those who are authorized to come in and out of the facility will be given the key cards. Anybody else who's coming in will still continue to have to ring a doorbell and we'll, we'll open that up and find out what the purpose of your visit is. So all these precautions are taking place to ensure that we're adhering to the proper guidelines set for by the state, uh, by the city of Manteca, as well as also ensuring food safety. Uh, surprisingly, uh, our food bank is one is one of many throughout throughout the nation, and many food banks actually already have a key card uh, entry system into the food bank. So we want to make sure that we're following those same protocols and guidelines to ensure food safety, because a big a big part of what we do is ensuring food safety. We want to make sure that the food that we're receiving is not contaminated in any way, and we want to make sure that we're providing you the best possible fresh produce and shelf-stable food items that you can possibly get. So along, along this journey, I hope you've been able to kind of learn a little bit more about what we do here at Second Harvest. We're, again, just so very thankful for everything that you give to us as donors. Uh, we're putting that money to fantastic use by increasing our food distribution to the community because as these economic times continue to people continue to struggle uh, with unemployment continuing to go up we know that services here at the food bank are ones that you're gonna need you're gonna continue to need and helping put put food on the table for our children within our community uh, as schools continue to remain closed and not necessarily knowing what the outcome is gonna be here this next school year uh, we want to make sure and be a service that is providing for families uh, in this uncertain time. So thank you all for being here, and if there are any questions, I'm more than happy to answer those. And remember, come on in. You can volunteer here. We are still accepting dry good donations. Um, and just say hi. The staff loves to see a friendly face. And if you see our trucks out and about, make sure to wave um, because they love that stuff. So thank you all for being here today and we'll see you next time on our next virtual tour.